Welcome to tutorial 12 in the practical RF design tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will learn the design of a low noise amplifier from scratch. For this tutorial, we will design an ISM band LNA from 2.4 GHz to 2.5 GHz applications. Eight steps are involved in designing an LNA. Firstly, a device will be selected. Secondly, the LNA impedances need to be obtained. Thirdly, the impedance matching for the LNA should be done. The fourth step is the circuit design and simulation. As a fifth step, layout design should be done. Then layout simulation should be conducted followed by EM circuit core simulation. Finally, the simulation results will be analyzed. In this step, measurement and correlation between the measurements are not included. Maybe in the future we can include measurement and correlation analysis as well. For this tutorial 12, LNA introduction and step 1 will be covered. Let's start our tutorial with LNA introduction. The figure here shows the basic RF radio system contains baseband processor, up conversion mixer, down conversion mixer, voltage control oscillator, local oscillator, frequency generating unit, pre-driver, driver, final PA, coupler, power controller, antenna switch, harmonic filter, antenna, pre-selector filter, low noise amplifier and post-selector filter. Each radio component plays a unique and significant part in achieving the end goal of receiving and transmitting information wirelessly over a long distance. The LNA is located at the receiver chain of the radio system. The receiver chain and LNA are shown in figure here. The signal received by the antenna will be routed to the receiver section by the antenna switch. The pre-selector filter will filter out of band frequencies and route the received signal to the LNA. The LNA is responsible for amplifying weak received signal with addition of minimal noise. Post-selector filter will further filter the received signal to be passed on to the down converter mixer and then the baseband processor. The LNA is also responsible for providing additional isolation from the mixer to the antenna. Since the LNA introduces noise to the receiver chain, it affects the receiver sensitivity and intermodulation distortion. The challenge of LNA designers is minimizing noise introduced by the LNA while obtaining appropriate gain and efficiency. Two ways of implementing an LNA are discrete and integrated circuit implementation. Each implementation has its advantages and disadvantages. The table below shows the characteristic of discrete LNA versus integrated circuit LNA. The advantages of discrete LNA over the IC LNA are inexpensive implementation, can be repaired if design not meeting goal during the bench testing, low transmission line loss compared to the IC, higher component Q, wide variety of components or lumped elements. The disadvantages of discrete LNA over IC LNA are lower reliability compared to the IC, limited bandwidth compared to IC, uncontrolled parasitics, large size, high assembly cost, limited to low frequency. Next, this table shows the characteristic of integrated circuit LNA versus discrete LNA. The advantage of integrated circuit LNA over discrete LNA are smaller size and weight, broader bandwidth, design flexibility because we can design whatever value of lump component we want, improved reliability, good reproducibility, lower cost in volume, very broad frequency for MMIC. The disadvantage of IC LNA versus discrete LNA are high cost compared to the PCB implementation in small quantity, no tuning, higher transmission line losses, undesired RF coupling, high equipment cost, limited component values are available, custom component can be designed but at higher cost. Even though there are two ways of implementing LNA, 
Both are relevant according to the application. The designer can choose one according to the product specification. For our application, we will be moving ahead with discrete LNA implementation. Freeze equation is an essential formula that enables us to calculate the receiver sensitivity. We can also calculate the IP3 and IP2 of the receiver chain. However, since we are focusing on LNA design only in this training, I will stop at the cumulative noise figure. This figure shows the receiver chain. The numeric gain and the noise figure of each component on the receiver chain are below that. Freeze formula calculates total noise figure of cascade of stages each with its noise figure and power gain, assuming that the impedance are matched at each stage. The freeze formula is given by the equation shown. The first term F1 in the equation above is the most significant contributor to the cumulative noise figure because it's not divided by a gain. Due to this, it's essential to minimize the noise figure of the first stage of the cascaded receiver system. These are LNA parameters simulated using Keysight ADS. P in RF is input power into the LNA. S21 is LNA small signal gain. Noise figure is a measure of how much noise the LNA introduces into the system. It will affect the sensitivity. Output IP3 is a measure of how linear the LNA is. It will affect the IM performance. S11 and S22 are the input and output return loss. It shows how well the input and output matching is done. S12 is reverse isolation. It shows how well the LNA isolates the input from the output. ICE is the DC current drawn of the LNA. RF freak is the frequency range of the LNA. Mu load, mu source, real part of driving point admittance, bilateral through return ratio loop gain determines how stable the LNA to the variation in load, VSWR, temperature, voltage and input power. The stability issue happens when LNA oscillates similar to an oscillator. The stability can be solved by avoiding signal from output from coupling in phase with the input. Stability is checked in design stage by simulating the stability factors such as mu source and mu load. We will also study WS probe stability analysis. WS probe has many stability analysis within. We will analyze the real part of driving point admittance and bilateral through return ratio loop gain in the WS probe. Common stability fixes are collector and base bypass capacitors. RC feedback which sacrifices the gain at low frequency for stability. Input resistive loading which sacrifices noise figure. Output resistive loading which sacrifices the gain power and IP3. And emitter feedback resistor which sacrifices the gain at high frequencies. To select a device, we need to have design requirement for the LNA. The LNA design requirement is derived from transmitter lineup specification. Generally, the technical manager or team lead will handle the transmitter lineup specification and the engineers will be given specification to design the LNA accordingly. These are the specification we would like to focus on this tutorial. The frequency range of the LNA is 2.4 GHz to 2.5 GHz. The gain is around 20 dB. The design should be unconditionally stable across wide frequency range. Input and output return loss should be less than minus 10 dB. Noise figure should be less than 1 dB and IP3 should be more than 15 dBm. Device technology need to be understood to select a suitable device effectively. Selection of a device is most crucial step. The device must be chosen based on the LNA stage specification. Device technology must be understood to select a suitable device for our LNA effectively. Please take a look at the graph attached here. This graph is taken from Analog Devices website. As you can see, device technology vary as we vary the power level and frequency. For low power application of less than 1 watts, silicon germanium is most suitable. Gallium asenite will be the right technology for power application between 1 watt to 6 watts and frequency range up to 100 gigahertz. For power above 6 watts, silicon aldimos, gallium nitride or silicon and gallium nitride or silicon carbide are suitable. For high power and low frequency applications, silicon aldimos is most suitable. 
For high power and mid frequency applications, gallium nitride or silicon devices will serve better. For high power and high frequency application, gallium nitride or silicon carbide devices are the best. Besides power and frequency, the supply voltage also dictates the device selection because the device supply voltage varies from 2V to 50V. To learn more about device technology, please go to the links shown here. NXP's BFU730F is identified as the right candidate for the LNA. BFU730F is a NPN silicon germanium BJT. These are the parameters of the selected device from the datasheet. From these parameters, we know that BFU730F will be able to meet our LNA design specifications. The next step is to select a device model. For BFU730F, the supplier NXP has provided two simulation models. Those are MAX and SPICE models. There are two ways to select a suitable or most accurate device model. Those are comparing the impedance with S-parameter data and the IV curve with the data sheet. I have done all the simulations for this exercise. So let's go through one by one according to the right order. First, we will look into S-parameter file simulation. There are a lot of S-parameter file available from the supplier, but we have selected BFU730F file with VCE equals to 2V and ICE equals to 25 milliamps. Let's simulate this. This is how the impedance looks like. Next, let's go to the max model and simulate that. This is the max model simulation. Before the simulation starts, we have to make sure that the S-parameter file biasing condition is equivalent to the max model biasing condition. I have already inserted data from the S-parameter file simulation here. As you can see, good correlation obtained between S-parameter of max model and S2P file that we have simulated before. Next, let's simulate the SPICE model. Before the simulation starts, we also have to make sure the SPICE model biasing condition is equivalent to the S-parameter file biasing condition. This is the results of SPICE model as compared to the S-parameter file simulation of the S2P file. We can see that the correlation is quite bad. The MAX model is proven as the most accurate model for the BFU730F. All the simulation in the following step will use BFU730F MAX model. ADS template simulation is used to plot the IV curve. It can be launched by clicking Design Guide, Amplifier, DC and Bias Point Simulations and BJT IV Curves Class A Power Efficiency Load GM vs Bias. This is the BJT Curve Tracer template that we just opened. We will modify this template by adding BFU730F and modify the VCE and IB accordingly. Since I have already done that, I will just open the template. First, we will look into max model simulation. This is the IV curve plot from the max model simulation. Next, we will look into SPICE model simulation. This is the IV curve plot from the SPICE model simulation. It will be easier to compare this plot side by side. As you can see from this slide, the MAX model is closely matches to the IV curve in the datasheet as compared to the SPICE model. Due to this, we will use the MAX model in all our simulations follows. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I will see you in my next video with another interesting problem. For inquiries, please email pragash at innovave.co or visit www.innovave.co.